All right, Gavin, while Chris gets unfrozen, um, yeah. I was going to ask you about LSU, and that was – I know you mentioned Jaden Daniels earlier, and I think, yeah. you know, we've talked a lot this summer about just how – it's like we, we need to really go back and think about where LSU was predicted by a lot of people last season. Like they were predicted – because they, they felt like one of the teams that were the unknowns because um, yeah. you had a new head coach, you had some of the things that were changing. Um, and so you just didn't know. I mean, we were like, hey, we don't know if the roster is exactly where it needs to be just yet. And all those questions. But then what do they do? They go out and win the West. Right. And now, you know, it's kind of a situation where, again, it's sort of like we talked about earlier, sort of setting the standard. I mean, now the expectation is that LSU gets to the college football playoff this season and has a chance to win the national championship in Brian Kelly's second season. And so just curious your thoughts on this LSU team entering, you know, the year. We talked about just how loaded they are talent-wise. I mean, the offense – could have the best quarterback, could have the best wide receiver group. You know, you go on the defense, you've got a, you know, I kind of, I think I made it one of my possible predictions. I mean, Harold Perkins is a guy who could be in the Heisman conversation if you're just trying to find some defensive guys that, that could get there. I mean, he qualifies for that. There's yeah. so many talented players on that defense. Just maybe your expectations for LSU. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, reflecting on last year, especially, you know, I think that, and we all saw, you know, Brian Kelly getting made fun of and his accent that popped up out of nowhere and whatnot. And that was all funny. That was it was funny. It was. Um, but I thought that what and I'm talking from a player's perspective, I thought that what Brian Kelly did last year was unanimously coach of the year type stuff, especially after that, um, that we all saw it, that week, week one loss to Florida State on a blocked field goal. And you're coming in yeah. year one trying to set a completely new culture than what was there before. I mean, Ed Ogeron and Brian Kelly are completely different people, completely different styles. I mean, literally may not be more different than anything, uh, any type of coaching change. And so for Kelly to come in, that game to happen where it's absolute heartbreaking, you lose it in New Orleans on a blocked field goal. I mean, week one, that can deter that can ruin your season. That can deteriorate a locker room. It's, it's unstable culture it is what it looks like and for them to do what they did the rest of the season beat alabama at home make the sec championship and you know have a chance to win that thing i thought that was an unbelievable you know showing and, and really explained why they brought in um brian kelly into baton rouge and and so yeah the expectations are through the roof for now it's like okay it's sec west championship like we win the sec west and we're in the championship or the season was a failure now, I truly think that that's the that's the standard now at LSU and and probably should be, but now it definitely is because they've done that in the past year and they got the talent. We talked about earlier with 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 Jaden Daniels and I think as a player you're confident that especially you can get it done two ways running and throwing the ball. He's proven that. Harold Perkins is an absolute game wrecker. I mean, you could have you know ten guys out of position on defense and he can make the play for a tackle for loss. Not a lot of people in college mm-hmm. football can do that. And so, you know, I think when you have confidence, you have two guys like that on both sides of the ball, the quarterback and your linebacker, two of probably the best players on your team and are probably the two better leaders on your team. That gives a team a lot of confidence, man, a lot of confidence. And so, you know, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see what they do. They go to Alabama this year and Alabama is going to be, you know, pissed off about what happened last year, the two point conversion. They want revenge. And so I'm really intrigued that honestly, if I had to star a team to watch, and I'd be most intrigued to watch. It's probably LSU this year because, you know, if they lose, which which we all know, you can lose any week in the Southeastern Conference. If they lose a game that they're not supposed to, you know, we could we could see you know some frustration or just be interesting to see what happens moving forward. That early season LSU schedule, Chris, we've talked about. I mean, you know, obviously opening with Florida State, you know, biggest game of the year early on, perhaps, and then you know they've got those games like an at Mississippi State, which a team like we've talked about got talent, maybe still don't know the expectations with a new offense. They got Arkansas, you know, in Baton Rouge, which again with with an offense like that, you just never know. They got to go to Ole Miss. They got to go to Missouri. You know, what's the thing Blaine always says, and we kind of echo it. It's just weird when you have to play in Columbia, Missouri sometimes. Weird things happen, uh, as we saw for Georgia last season. And so I think LSU's early season schedule, not to say that the latter part isn't hard, because, again, they've got to go to Alabama. They've got A&M in there, too. But I think it's going to be very fascinating to see how they kind of navigate this early part of the schedule, which, again, really all starts with Florida State because it's like, okay, you get a win there, you come out and and beat a Florida State team that some people think, you know, can be a college football playoff team, should be a favorite to be. If you come out and beat them, all right, you're off to a great start. But if you come out and lose that game, you know, again, it's like, 
oh, then you start to stare down that possibility of, okay, at Mississippi State, really important, which it would be anyways, but that's an yeah. early kickoff there. Um, and so you then start to look at those kind of games. And so, yeah, I mean, it's um, they don't like talent. And I think just what Brian Kelly's done in such a short amount of time there, like you said, Gavin, I mean, it's just it's so impressive that this is where they're at now heading into the season with the expectation that they can win the national title in year two. So Yeah, and I think that's why you got to give him his flowers for last year because that whole nightmare situation that you just explained is what happened last year. They lost in New Orleans to Florida State by a blocked field goal that was probably – you know, maybe the game of the year, to be honest. And so mm. for him to, to rally that locker room under, you know, they didn't trust him yet. And I'm not even sure if he trusted his players yet. It was a total, they didn't even have a foundation of a culture there yet. And they've suffered a loss like that. I mean, that can really, really rip into a team. Trust me, from, I'm speaking from personal experience. That can really <laughs> affect, really affect your psyche of the team and moving forward. College football is all about momentum. It's all about momentum. You play a team in week three, they did look different by week seven. They look different by week 10. It's all about when you play a team. And, you know, for them to be able to do what they did last year, I mean, I, I got to give them his flowers. It was a tremendous job. Well, not just that, Gavin. I thought maybe the most impressive thing they did, they got run out of their own building by Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that could have we, – we didn't know exactly how good Tennessee was at that time. I don't know what the odds would have been on LSU winning the West from that point on, but they, they couldn't have been great. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And I think, you know, I'm seeing – Comment there from our viewer uh, uh, Trey Wright. They they got boat raced. I mean, it wasn't even a competition. And I think I literally think on the opening kickoff, I think either yeah. I think LSU they fumbled, fumbled it. The I ball believe and yeah. Tennessee scored like two plays later. I mean, it wasn't even a it wasn't even a competition. It was just Tennessee won the entire game. And so you know exactly like that. And so somebody's got to do a deep a dive into into what Brian Kelly does after losses because holy smokes, dude, yeah. they recover and they play well. 